Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, back on to the scraping project on the Monarch 16 inch lathe. We are working on the cross slide here. And in our previous episode, we ground this uh, flat, got the, got the surfaces flat, and installed a layer of turkite, which is a wear strip material. Uh, where you add more material on when the part wears down. And we're gonna take this thing apart now and go try it out on the lathe and start scraping her in. Now, all these weights are just on here to kind of help hold it in place while I epoxied it. So we're gonna remove the weights now and uh, take a look at things. And pull it up off of our cellophane. Looks good. Let's take it over to the bench and uh, we'll get this thing trimmed up. So everything looks good. My turkite seems like it's uh, firmly applied. And I'm just gonna take a razor. I got a nice sharp uh, razor blade in here. And we're gonna go ahead and just start trimming this up, cutting it pretty much just as flush as I can. I'm gonna get it close and then we'll come back and trim it in exactly. Let's see here. So basically I'm just kind of going right up next to the cast iron here with my razor blade and just trying to get it flush down through here. All right, if we have that all trimmed up nice. So um, let's take her over to the lathe and uh, see how everything fits up over there. So we're about ready to go ahead and start scraping the bottom of this to match this surface down here. But before I do, I wanna kinda of give you a little bit of a, um, I just give you an idea of how all this works in case you're not familiar with ways and, and the adjustments and what's going on. So we have already previously scraped these surfaces in. So these two flat surfaces are on the same plane with one another. They're level with one another. They're not, one end's not higher than the other or anything like that. That was all done previously in another video. We've also already scraped the insides of these dovetails. Uh, that was a separate plane basically and what I wanted to do was you get one side straight and flat uh, spotting it over with your, your 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 straight edge and then you do the other side you get it straight and flat but they have to be perfectly parallel and we've measured across pins to do that all that's already been done so now we got to work on scraping in this matching part so that we got a nice fit on here and uh, to do this, we're actually gonna use this scraped surface as our reference plane that we'll be working off of. We're not gonna take this over to the surface plate uh, because we're not trying to match it to the surface plate, we're trying to match it to this surface right here. Uh, and they should both be flat nonetheless, but still we wanna match these surfaces. So here again is my, my part that we're gonna be working on. And uh, just so you understand this, the first thing we'll do is we'll scrape these two flats to match these flats. Then we will work on this dovetail over here. We'll get it where it's uh, bluing and spotting up good over here. And then we'll work on the gib. Now, if you're not familiar with the gib or you've heard that term, this is a gib. And if you look, it's tapered. And if you look over here, this dovetail on this side, I don't know if you can see it very easily, but it's thicker up here than this down here. This is on a taper. We have a matching taper in here. And when you put these together, basically that gib fits up in here. There are two screws, one on the front and the back that you just adjust this piece forward and backwards. When you do, because you got two wedges, uh, it's going to be tightening or loosening in this direction. And that's how you adjust for wear in here is you, you adjust that back and forth. All right, so let's go ahead and 
slide this on. Okay, I'm going to take my gib. We'll slide it in the front. These are my screws. There's one on the front and in the back. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those in. And basically with these screws, you're just going to, you'll have to loosen one and tighten the other, loosen one and tighten the other to adjust that gib. And once you do that, you lock it in place. It's not going to move. It's not going to be loose in there and go forward and backward or anything. So I'll tell you what, let's uh, go ahead now. We'll tighten this one up on it. And it's a little bit tight. I'm just gonna loosen that up just a teeny tiny bit. Tighten that one in. All right, now if you notice that's sliding nice and, and that's, that feels real good. I'm not feeling any binding in one end the other. It tells me everything's pretty parallel in here even without doing any scraping, which is good. So um, now, that I've kind of just confirmed that, hey, this thing is going to slide and it's going to work. It's not binding or anything. We got a gap in the top. It's not touching on the top of this at all, which is uh, we're, we're only touching on the bottom surfaces and on the dovetails. So let me take all this back off. We'll get some blue. We'll start spotting this up and uh, we'll start working on getting that bottom scraped in. I'm going to try a new bluing material here. Uh, this is actually an ink, uh, is Prussian blue is the color of the ink, but this is actually uh, etching ink. Uh, and this was uh, recommended by Tom Lipton. Some of you guys may watch Tom Overdock's tools, but uh, Richard King had a scraping class out in California back during the summer, and um, Tom had brought some of this stuff by. His wife uses it in some of her printing, and uh, they really liked how this stuff worked for bluing ink. Um, it's, it's real thin from what they told me. It, uh, I'm just gonna put a little dab down in there. It spreads real easily. It doesn't have any like ground up grit in it, kind of like some of the other uh, materials that we use and it's water soluble. Uh, so you can clean it up basically uh, with just uh, soap and water. So I'm just gonna, ooh, that's way too thick, but spread some on here. I'm gonna have to do some wiping. Might need to thin that down some. I do like how it's spreading though. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, what we're gonna do now is take this part here. I'm going to slide it in here. I'm not going to worry about putting the gib in for this. I'm just going to be sliding it back and forth, but we're going to move back and forth a few times, pull it off, and let's see where we're touching. <laughs> so um, it's hard to see, but I actually have some little glue spots on here, and <laughs> Surprise, surprise, that's the only place it's touching. So let me go over here and knock those off. And uh, uh, I might just go ahead and knock those off real quick and then come back and we're gonna spot it again and see if we can get a better read. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I just went over and just did a blind cross hatch on there. Just scraped it in two directions. Uh, was not trying to hit any high spots, just trying to kind of hit it all just to get a surface to start with. And now I'm going to rock this back and forth on here and see if we get some blue that transfers this time a little bit better. And yeah, we definitely got some blue spots on there. So let me go back over and do some more scraping until we get good contact on this. <laughs> Been a couple of cycles already. Uh, we'll sliding it back and forth and bringing it in a little bit closer. And you can see now where our high spots are, starting to pick up some blue in some places. And just like with regular scraping, what we do is we just kind of go back and forth. We take a little bit off the time. Now, when I'm doing turkite, we use this draw scraping method, um, basically just scraping across it. 
and I do the same type thing. We're doing a cross hatch pattern. So I scraped it in this direction last time. I'm gonna scrape it in this direction this time. And I'm just coming in here. I'm just trying to hit those uh, blue points. The nice thing about this turkite is, is that it's soft. It's fairly easy to move this material around. It moves a lot faster than doing cast iron. So um, let me just go ahead and hit this side. it so let me go spot it again and we'll do this a few cycles until we get a, a good coverage pattern that we like and then we'll start working on the inside of the dovetails here made several more rounds here between uh, scraping and going back over there and bluing it up. And this is kind of where I'm at right now. We're getting real close. We got pretty good contact pretty much all the way through here. Maybe just a little bit light here in the center uh, and not really have quite as much as I want, but we're getting close. But uh, I'm actually switching over to a little bit different, more narrow and with a wider radius on it. Uh, uh, cutter here and I'm, I'm just wanting to take not quite as wide of a, of a cut each time. Basically I'm wanting to try to do is kind of cut these little marks that are on here in half and into smaller marks and kind of turn one big blob into two smaller blobs of a, uh, for all intent and purposes uh, to try to just get this down to size. So uh, I'm going to come in here and we're just going to keep on scraping these. Same basic principle as scraping metal. Technique's a little bit different, uh, but we're just trying to get good contact and uh, take some of these highs down. Uh, but we're gonna make a couple more passes on this and uh, everything keeps going good. I feel like we'll uh, be where we wanna be pretty quickly on this. side. like that and uh, we will blew it up again. I'll bring y'all back after uh, we take this down a little bit farther and hopefully get a little bit better contact. Well, here we go. I think this is going to be a stopping point. I've got pretty good coverage. I've got pretty much good spotting. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this uh, for a turkite job. I think we've got it looking really good. So the bottoms on these are good. Uh, next step is, is I need to start spotting uh, first this dovetail and then second with the gut dovetail with the gib on it. Uh, but I'm running out of time for this video, so that's going to be a wrap for now. We'll come back uh, probably next weekend and try to finish this thing up because uh, I'm anxious to get this thing all back up and going here as quick as we can, uh, but at the same time making sure we do a good job. But uh, anyway, I'm real happy with that scraping job and let's move on.